Hi all, this is Anjali and in this video we will be doing how to use for loop in Python. So every programming language has certain statements which are called repetitive or iterative statements. The purpose of these statements is to repeat the same code again and again. So if I have a set of statements which I want to be executed for a number of times, we need to have a repetitive or iterative statement for that. In Python, you have two statements for this. We have for and we have while. So first, we'll be working with the for loop. That's how we use for loop in Python to repeat a set of statements. So I'll be using one of the variations of for in this video. That is when we use range in for loop. And there are other options which are used when you work with list, arrays, or dictionaries that we'll be doing once we have done lists and how to work on them. But right now, we're just going to have the basic for loop, which is used with the help of range. So as you can see over here, this is the basic syntax of for loop. Like you have to write for some variable name in range. Range is a predefined function in Python, which generates numbers. Like if I have range 5 here, so it will generate numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the upper range is never included. So if I have for num in range 5 and then I have given print num. So make sure you have a colon here and after an indentation you write the statement which you want to repeat. So by default num will start from 0. So for num in range 5, num is initially 0. You don't have to write anywhere that num should be initialized to 0. Automatically num will be assigned 0 initially. And then we don't have to write anywhere that it should be increased by 1 automatically it will increase by 1. So for is an auto increment loop over here. So num will automatically increase by 1 every time it repeats the statements. Like num is initially 0, range 5, OK, it comes here, print num. So 0 gets printed. Then num will automatically become 1. 1 is less than 5, 1 gets printed, then 2, then 3, then 4. When it reaches 5, it will stop repeating. The upper value is never for the upper value, it's never repeated. So for 5, the loop will not be repeated. It will repeat till 4. So that is when I have to write just one number here. So it will start from 0 and go up to this number minus 1. And whatever statements you have within, they will be repeated for that many times. It could be simple print. It could be some other calculations. It could be anything. So whatever statement you write within for, those will be repeated for the number of times the loop works. This is one variation of writing for. Another one is when you write two numbers here. I can write for variable in range number 1, comma number 2. Now, why do I need two numbers? I don't want to start from 0 all the time. I want to start from some other number. So if you don't want to start from 0, you want to start from some other number. You give that number here. The first number is the number from where you have to start. And the second number is the number till where you have to go. Again, the upper limit is not included. So if I write for num in range 2, 6, num will start from 2. Then it will go up till 5. It will not work for 6. So you'll get 2, 3, 4, 5 if I'm printing the numbers. So again, number 1 is from where you start. Number 2 is still where you have to go, but the upper limit is not included. So that's second way of using for loop. The third method of using for loop in Python is that you give three numbers. It's number 1, number 2, number 3. Now, what is this third number for? By default, for loop increases the variable by 1 every time. Like num is 2, so it becomes 3, then it becomes 4. I don't want to increase by 1. I want to increase by some other number, maybe 2, maybe 5, maybe whatever. So if I want to increase by any other number than 1, I give that number here at the position of number 3. So when I write for num in range 2, 6, 2, that means... I have to start from 2, I have to go up till 6, and it should increase by 2 every time. So it will print only 2 and 4. 6 will not be printed, so this won't be printed. We'll just get 2 and 4. Why? Because the upper limit is not included. So it starts from 2, 2 less than 6 is true, it gets printed, then it will increase by 2 and becomes 4. So 4 gets printed, then it increases and becomes 6, but we can't print 6 because that's the upper limit. So the output would be only 2, 4, 6 will not be there. And then in case you want to have it in decreasing order, I don't want an increasing, I want an decreasing order. 
So you have to start from a bigger number. Let's say I start from 5 and I go up to 2 and I give minus 1 here. So it will print 5, 4, 3. It won't print 2 because again the number where you have to end is never included. So that is the basic syntax of for. Now I will show you that how actually for loop works. Let's say what I need to do is I need to print numbers from 1 to 5. So if I write the code to print numbers from 1 to 5, how do I write it? For num in range 5. If I write like this and print it and the num is here, do you think it should print 1 to 5? No, it will print 0 to 4 because I told you num starts from 0 and goes up to one less limit. But I want it from one to five. So what I have to do is, I have to start it from one, comma, instead of five, I'll write six. Because upper limit is not included, it'll go one before that. So if I run this, I get numbers from one to five. Then if I have to print all even numbers, from 1 to 10. So even numbers are the ones which are divisible by 2 and we know that they are the gap of 2. So the first even number is 2, then you have 4, then you have 6 and then you have 8, 10. So I have to print till 10. So I'll take the loop till 11 and every time I want it to increase by 2. And then I write here print num. So when I write this, so num is going to start from 2 and every time it is go it's going to increase it by 2 and it will move till it reaches 11. So as it becomes 12, it will stop working further and we will get the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If I would have given 10 here, it won't print 10 because the upper number is never printed. So it will get till 8. But we wanted 10 also to be printed. That's why I had the loop till 11 so that it should print 10. Okay, I hope you understood this concept that it's starting from this number, going up till this, increasing by this number every time. Okay, okay, if uh, you've understood this, so let's say I need to print table of a number. Let it be, I need to print table of six, the multiplication table. So I have to print first 10 multiples. I have to print like 6, 12, 18, so on up to 60. So if you really want to give it a try, pause your video, try it yourself that how can you print table of six and once you're done resume the video and match if your answer is the same or if you're getting the correct output that obviously means your answer is correct so we have to print all or print first 10 multiples of six okay so six is the number for which you have to print the multiple. So I should start from 6. 60 is the last value, so I take 61. And I need to increase by 6 every time. So I'm going to write here print num. So what it prints is the table of 60. 6, 12, 18, and so on. Fine. Now this is to print table of 6. But I don't want only for the 6. I want that the user should be able to input any number. So to print first 10 multiples of n, which could be any number taken from the user. So let's take that number from the user. So we'll have n is equal to int input, enter a number. Okay, you get the number in n and now you have to check the conditions. So enter a number, n, fine, I have to print the table of n. So I need to start from n, that's my number. And instead of 61, 61 was actually the number multiplied by 10 plus 1. And you need to increase by n every time, that's it. So I need to start from n, I have to go up to n into 10, and I have to increase it by n every time. So if I give 8, I get table of 8. If I give any other number, let's say I run this and I enter 30, so I get table of 30. So whatever number you enter, it will give you the table for that because we are starting from that number, going up to 
tenth multiple plus one and we are increasing it by the number every time. So this is how you can get the first ten multiples. There is one more way of getting this. One option could be this that you take the number here and I take this loop num from one to eleven so that it goes one to ten and what you print is number into n. So num is one, one into n will be printed, then two into n will be printed, then three into n will be printed, and so on up to number into ten. So we get it like this. If you want that it should print like a proper multiplication table as we write. So we can give like first number should be printed, then multiplication sign should be there, then num should be there, which is going to be one, two, three, four. Then equal to sign should be there, and then num into n should be there. So I just write it in print statement like this, and when I give the number, I get the table in this form. So n value is coming here, crosses and double quotes, so it'll come as it is. Then value of num will come in this column, then equal to will come as it is, and then the product is shown in this column. So that's how we can use loops in various ways. So this is how you work with for loop. Now it's not necessary that for loop is used to print numbers only. You can use it for any purpose. Let's say I ask you to use a loop to find a, a area of three rectangles. Now if you have to find area of three rectangles, so we have done how to do for one. So we know how to do for one. So for one, how do we do? We take L is equal to enter length, then you take b, that is enter breadth, then you calculate the area, which is l into p, and we print the same, area is a. And this code I want to be repeated. I want this code to be repeated for three times. So I write for n in range 3, colon. Since these statements have to be repeated, repeated under for loop, so they must be given with an indent. So all these which are indented after for loop will be repeated for each value of n. So when n is 0, all these four statements will be executed. Then when n becomes 1, again, all these statements will be executed. When n becomes 2, they're executed again. <coughs> so I enter length and breadth, get it. I, I enter again, then I enter again, and I get the values. So that's how your for loop works. So for loop can be used to repeat literally anything. The set of statements which you write inside the loop, that means after the indent, would be repeated for the number of times the loop is going to repeat. So that's how we use for loop for iterating, for working with things again and again. So same statement will be repeated and executed multiple times depending upon how your for loop is working. So these were the few codes which I did for you. And you can try solving this program that is to input a number and print all odd numbers from 1 to that number. For example, if I enter 20, so I have to print all odd numbers from 1 to 20. And the second one you can try is to input a number and print its factors. We have done how to print the multiples. You have to do to find its factors. Like if I have 12, so factors would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So the numbers which can divide that particular number are the factors of that number. So you need to print them. So hint is you have to use somewhere the sign. That's a hint for this. And for this, you don't have any hint. So these are the codes which you have to do. So try solving these two questions. Write down the solution in the comment section so you can cross-check whether 
it's all fine. In case you're not able to solve, then also mention it in the comment section and I'll get back to you. If you found this video useful in understanding loops, do click the like button, share with the other people who might be interested to learn Python and yes, do subscribe the channel. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Keep watching, keep learning. Bye for now. Thank you.